Hello. <laughs> it's about the 3rd or 4th, I think it's the 3rd of January 2019. I think I got it right. I'm just going to do a little painting and I'll chat away while I'm painting. I don't feel like doing full-on learning exercises, but I'll just talk about the little bits and pieces that go through my mind while I'm painting. I have been making videos lately, just music, and I quite like them because it's not so hard for me. So let's just make a simple one, we'll make it up as we go along, and I'll chat away as I'm working, okay? Let's go. I've got all my colours ready, that's white, that's just white as far as acrylic paint goes, is acrylic paint, that's acrylic white. Sometimes it's called blank, sometimes it's called titanium white. If you're working in oils, use titanium white. This is a great colour. This is Windsor Blue, and it's an acrylic colour. That's what I'm using, acrylic Windsor Blue. Ooh, upside down. Crimson, just a common crimson colour. Uh, these are student quality paints. This one's artist quality. These are all student quality. Down here we have Indian Yellow. It's actually, it's a Matisse, and it's an Australian Sienna. I think it's called a Matisse, I can't quite read it. But I call it Indian Yellow because in Rowney you'll, call, you'll find Indian Yellow in the student quality Rowney oils. And this is a similar colour. It's a beautiful colour, I'll show you later. So where were we? Crimson, Cobalt Blue, Raw Sienna. That'll make us our purples for our greys, our shadows. And we've got the yellow, the bright yellow for the trees in the foreground, the green for the trees in the foreground. The red, I'll put it right down the bottom here, that's a bright red because that only comes in the foreground. We'll, lose, we'll use it later in the painting. That's a foreground colour. Burnt Sienna, that's a foreground colour also. So the background colours are up here. Okay, let's get that white out of there. You'll see how runny my paint is. That one's a bit too runny, it's got away from me. It's got away, there, okay. And let's go. Okay, it doesn't matter how you get it on for the sky, but get that white on. I didn't want that blue in there, but it doesn't matter. And let's come down here. We'll come down to two thirds. I've noticed a lot of students, they stop their sky up here somewhere. In fact, sometimes they stop it right in the middle of the board, which is, well, it cuts your painting in half. And uh, then the people looking at your painting, sort of look at it, they look at the top half of the painting and they look at the bottom half of the painting. Well, there shouldn't be halves. The painting should be all thin. You know? so, so don't run your skyline down to exactly half and then start. Put the skyline down low, like that. Now, that's got too much blue in there, but it doesn't matter. And I've got too much paint on here, so I'll scrape a bit off. And I'll put a bit of that very dark blue up the top and I'll blend it in. Now, we'll keep that white there. Let's blend it like this. I've got gloves on. I don't want to be poisoned by the paint. We've realised in the last few generations that paint and other stuff enters your skin really well and therefore enters your organs and can hang there for 20 years and then you find out you've got cancer because you painted with your hands. Not a good idea. So that's more or less our sky. It's nice and dark and the paint is not drying very fast today because I've got a lot of paint on there, not just a little film, there's a lot of paint on there. You see it's like a cream and therefore it's not drying so fast. Now let's come back over here and I'll mix up a colour for the clouds. We can have nice big clouds in that sky. Clean my knife, pick up a little bit of crimson, mix it in with the blue, that's the cobalt blue. A little bit of raw sienna will turn it grey, it'll turn it from purple to grey. And then we have a mixture of all the purples and greys. Don't mix your paint completely, leave them partly mixed. Just put a little bit of this. You see it turns grey? There. There, it turns from a red purple, a blue purple, and then you've got a grey in the middle. If I put red in there, 
the clouds will look forward. If I put grey in there, the clouds will look back. So we'll use this grey about here in the clouds. Put a little bit on there. Let's put a little bit of red in the top. And a little bit of bluey colour in the bottom there. That yellow's there, that's okay. We wanted a bit of yellow there, that's nice. Now wipe my hands best I can. I'm getting used to using these gloves, I don't like them. I should be using a brush, but I don't feel like using brushes like there either. Paint on one side of my finger, just a little bit of paint on the side of my finger. And I'm going to rub that bit of my finger on, not the painty bit, I'm going to rub the other bit first. Up, round and round and round. And then I'll turn the painty bit on and then we've got nice clouds happening. White paint. I'm putting my paint in plastic bags because I've got all little bits of paint everywhere. So I'll put them all in the plastic bags and I know where everything is. In the plastic bags, it's easy for me. You don't have to do it. It's not important, but it's easy for me. More paint. Better one. Let's do it again. Uh, okay, here. Yeah. So this paint's like a cream. It's a nice thick layer of cream. Well, not too thick. See, it's drying a little bit down here. That's okay. That's okay. You know, in your sky, you always need every colour. I put a little bit of crimson there, a little bit too much, I'd say. I'll put it on the masking tape and I'll bring it over into the painting. Yes, a little bit too much. Just a little bit of crimson there. The stuff's gone wobbly. And a little bit of raw sienna there. Raw sienna crimson. That gives you a little bit of colour in the bottom of the sky. It takes it back. And let's go white. And you'll see later how this white takes your painting right back. If you can put white in your painting, put it there all the time. This is just amateur's paintings. It's, it's not highly professional where everything has to be right. You make it up as you go along. You see something good, you leave it there. You see something not so good, we'll cover it over with a tree. I want just a little bit more white in that cloud. In towards the middle of the painting. That'll do. So let's make the clouds look like they're moving. Take a soft brush. Not too hard. A softer brush than this would do. That's just a normal house painting brush. That's a one inch brush actually. I thought it was three quarter. But that's a one inch house painting brush. And we just drag it across softly. Clean the brush. Softly again. That again takes your clouds back. Gives you more distance in your painting. And if you want to be smart, jump. Have a bit of sunlight coming up there. Okay, see that bit of white there? That's no good, it's too close to the edge of your picture. We might cover it with trees later, but just in case, I'll take it out. I'll brush it back. You want people's eye to be attracted to here, not to there. So what are we going to have? I like mountains. A little bit of cobalt blue on the brush. That's pure cobalt blue. It's much too dark. Pick up a bit of white from there and dull it down. So we look like we've got mountains in the distance. Okay. Scrub a bit of white into it so it's not dark. Your mountain should be darker on top than in the middle. I mean darker on top than the bottom. So there's a lot of white paint there. Move it along. Now we can start getting a little bit of shape into them now. Uh, yes, it's okay if they're light like that. That's okay. Now, with a little bit more blue, we get a bit of shape happening there. And I've picked up what is a little bit more blue with a little bit of grey in it this time. And that'll give me the mountain in front. Hmm. I don't know if I like that or not. I'll knock that bit out. And then, let's pick up some grey. We'll come back and we'll put something along here that's a bit grey-blue. Looks like trees. This is the same brush. I haven't cleaned it yet because I want all those colours on it. And I'm going to fill that bit in. 
We need to keep our horizon line there under the trees, which is about the horizon line, which the horizon line would be about there. We need to keep it straight. You see how those trees are rather dull? That's how we want them in the distance, not bright in the distance. If you use your bright colours in the distance, then you've got no bright colours for the foreground. So you have to have your bright colours in the foreground and very boring grey colours in the background. That'll give you distance. It's called tones of colours. With the same brush, I'll pull it to a chisel point. If I can. Yeah, you see it's sticky and it's gone like that. I've loaded it with some raw sienna. I could make a perfect colour, but let's just try raw sienna and see how it looks. Oh, that's okay. I'll mix the right colour. Raw sienna. Right there. A little bit of white in there, that's okay. And see that green? Very little, tiny bit of that green. There's too much there, I'd say. Come on, closer look. There's a lot of green there. It's a very strong green. That's thallow green, by the way. I use it, I should be using vir viridian green, but I'm using thallow. And that's turning into a very dull green, grey green. I'll put a little bit of grey in there. A little bit of grey. And then I need to put some white in there to bring it into the background further. I might put a little bit of blue in there. It's still too dark. A bit of yellow went in there, I didn't mean that. Okay, a little bit more green to show it's a green colour. There. And don't mix your colours completely. Have this rainbow, it looks better. I'll use my funny little brush again. Pick up paint on one side. And over here, I'll correct that. And just dab a few bits on the trees. There they look like distant trees. Load the brush again. Now here, it's a little bit closer. So I'll look for a darker colour. Maybe there. Maybe we'll put a little bit of colour in it. Just to get that closer look. Let's see how it looks. Now. There. Just a little bit more green. Okay. Come back the other way and do the same. Reload the brush. Do it again. And a little bit hint of green in this one too. Mm -hmm. I put that there, I don't need it, so I'll put it there. Empty my brush there, save the paint, yes. I think I'll put water along there. Before I do, I found this little brushes. I'm using up all my old brushes. That looks better. Mm. What's this one? Oh, it's a one inch brush too. Oh, it's very stiff. Maybe no good. Oh yeah, he's coming good. Okay. Yeah, that might be all right. Okay, let's try it. I want reflections all along there. Reflections coming down into white paint. And the sky color along the bottom. I'll brush that in horizontally, brush that in. That's our water. Clean the brush. Clean the brush a lot like that. Don't wash it. Just clean it like that. Now, there's a bit of paint along there I don't want. There's a bit too much. I'll scrape that off. Put it over there. And with a little brush that I just cleaned, we'll pull some of them trees down into the water. Straight down. Straight down. I think that's straight. And again, down, down, down. That's the reflections. Then with a painting knife, I use this Indian yellow. Australian sienna actually. I'll put it there. And in it I'll put some white. 
bit more white. What a brilliant colour. That's the brilliant colours we need. So you don't mix it. Just put it there and pick it up on the edge of your knife like that. Then we take it over to the painting and you put it on. You can move it across if you can. Or just put it on. That's your river bank on the other side of the river. This knife still has a bit on it so I'll put that down there. Then under the river bank you put a dark line. Like that. It must be horizontal. If you come down like that, you lose all your perspective. You must have it horizontal. With the edge of your knife, spread your paint thin, clean knife, and then just put the edge of the knife there on the paint. Just like that. You can test it. Yes, you get a white line, see? That's to get your white line. So you do it over and over again. You put it on there, then you put it on the painting, then you put it on there, then you put it on the painting. On the painting. In the distance. That's in the middle of the painting. To catch your eye into the middle of the painting. White line. Ripples on the water. They must be horizontal. For horizontal water, they must be horizontal. Not too many, and they get further apart as they come towards you. Now with a brush about that size, pick up your Indian yellows, a little bit of raw burnt sienna in there, a few pretty colours. Let's have, no, we won't use a yellow yet, a little bit of green, just enough to make it a rainbow looking thing. There we go, two colours, and on here you can fill in the painting. Let's come down there and back there. That looks good. We'll fill this bit in because no paint on there. Now, where I am down the bottom here, this is the masking tape. Let's do the same here. Mm. Oh, well, might as well just do that. And then your crimsons come in here. Crimson here. Let's have some crimson in the bottom. Dark colours in the bottom. Blues in the bottom. It looks okay. With the fan brush, what's left of my fan brush, you can touch up the bits and pieces and have some grass there. A reflection of the grass in the water. Yes. If you see a good bit, like over here, this white bit, don't destroy it. Just go around it, like that. Because it looks quite attractive as it is. And the dark grass is last. It comes up from the bottom and goes up over everything, again, to give you that depth. Let's have the dark grass come up here. Like that. And while we're in close, we'll put some little branches, little tiny bits in the background here for these trees. Now remember those white lines go over the reflections. There. Not much, just a little bit. Oh, that's a bit big, that one. Might be a big dead tree up there, eh? And then we'll have a little bit of a reflection for it there. I added those dark lines there, that's better. Well so far there's our painting without any trees. I've mixed the dark there and put plenty on this brush. It's a good brush, it doesn't matter what sort of brush you use. The trees are from light to dark. Let's do this tree properly. We'll put it, now the sky's okay there. Okay, I think it's got to go there. The sky's not so good there, not going to spoil anything. So it's going to go somewhere in this area. What I mean properly is, you see I'm putting dark on first. That's the other side of the tree. The tree's got to be there somewhere. That's the other side. Then with this little brush, I'll pick up light and dark. I'll pick up some dark on one side 
and light on the other side, like that. And then brush in the branches. Now the branches go over this because that's the other side of the tree. So the branches go over the top of that. When you're painting your branches, don't worry about them bits that are missing. If you go out in the bush and you have a good look, you don't see all the branches. Some bits of branch you just can't see. They mingle in with the sky. So that's our first tree. Unload your brush there. That'll give you a bit of shadow under the tree. And then you come back with your brush and you load your dark and your light on the brush. I've loaded yellow but it's going to be very dirty by the time I get it over there because the brush is dirty. But it's dirty in the colours I want. A little bit of green and the yellow. And that's the colours for the sun on this side of the tree. The dark and the light. Don't follow those ones, that's the other side of the tree. So I've loaded the brush with a bit more paint. That, brand, that trunk needs to come down further and it needs to be more chunky because that's quite a big tree now. It grew. So if it gets bigger, you bring it closer and make the trunk thicker. Let's try that. I don't know if you can hear that background music. I'm in Thailand and the local people are still getting over New Year. They have parties every night. We need a little reflection there, don't we? Yeah. Well, that's my tree today. To attract your eye into the middle more, I'm going to put a branch here. So the tree's more or less pointing into the middle of the picture. And down a fraction more. That'll do. On the other side here, I think I'll put a dead tree. Now I mixed up some paint just then and I added some bright red, warm red. Now the dead tree can go anywhere, we could have more than one. Let's try a big one first and see how it looks. We'll have it well back here, bring it in, twist it round, bring it up like that. That's a start. Okay, now students, I see so many paintings and all the trees look like a pressed flower. It's very hard to find a dead tree or any tree where the branches are not crossing. So you have to have branches crossing. I see so many trees and the branches don't cross. There. There. I'll tidy this one up a bit, make it prominent. There. Attract the eye. I'd put in a white line down the inside of the tree. Let's have more branches. Okay, it goes up, up, like this, up there. Good. And more. Hold the brush loose. Just put it there and twiddle it up to where you want. You won't get it right every time. And if it doesn't turn out real well, you can put leaves all over it. That's a bit much. I won't do any more on that one. We'll have a little one here somewhere. And some branches on the ground. Okay, let's have a look at our painting. This tree needs to be highlighted here. To bring it forward. There. This little one's okay, it's a bit missing, but it doesn't matter. This one could have a highlight there. So I think it looks all right. Bit there. Now my famous birds. I'll put my birds here. They're not necessary, but often in a painting, to keep your eye running around the painting, 
if, the, if there was no clouds, or maybe your eye would drift off. But if you had a bird, your eye travels across the bird and onto the rest of the painting. So birds are quite good to attract your eye, to attract your eye into the right direction. I'll sign that now. Now my paint's still wet. Your paint, acrylic paint, might be drying too fast because you're not using enough, or you're in a very dry climate. This is a moist climate in Thailand. It's quite warm, but it's a moist climate, which keeps the paint from drying too quick. We'll take the masking tape off and see how it looks. Nothing fancy, just a little exercise, but I had a good chat. It's really good talking in English when you live in Thailand. I don't understand their language, but that's good. I don't get into any arguments. There we are. That's your exercise for today. You, you can have a closer look. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.